Okay, so this is a short orientation to how to set up DaVinci Resolve to work with Nikon and RAW files. It should work for uh, any version, PC, Intel Mac, or M1 uh, Apple Silicon Mac. Um, there is one trick that I need to show you first. Uh, if you have an M1 Mac, when you get ready to start up Resolve and you want to work with Nikon RAW files, go to the application, right-click, choose Get Info. When that window opens up, click this checkbox for Open Using Rosetta, or the program will not see the Nikon RAW files. It'll see them as audio files. So having done that, open Resolve. This is the media panel of Resolve. The very first thing you need to do is to set up the uh, project settings. So go to this little gear down in the corner, open project settings. This is where you set all of the parameters for your timeline and, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, but we're concerned with two things. First off, camera raw. Camera raw settings, you've got a drop down menu at the top. Nikon raw is included in this, hooray. And you want to set up how you want it interpreted. You have a number of choices here. First, you have a choice of whether Resolve decodes them at full res or partial res. I generally work with half res when I'm editing. Um, it's a little easier on the system. The system is more responsive. Um, there is a setting on output where you can tell Resolve to render everything at highest quality and highest sizing resolution. So this doesn't have to affect your output, but it makes the system a little more responsive when you're editing if you do that. Then this important um, item here, you've got three choices of how it decodes the raw footage. And this is the process of getting the raw footage to RGB and what form of RGB it, it does it in. And there, there are three choices. One is Nikon default, which is a setting that you would set up for default for all Nikon footage. The second is camera metadata. This would be um, whatever you've set the raw setting up to in the camera. So if you've set the camera up to Nikon NRAW SDR, the metadata will tell Resolve to interpret that as Rec. 709 Gamma, Rec. 709 Color Space. If you set the camera up to Nikon NRAW N-Log, the file will tell Resolve to interpret it as Nikon NRAW Gamma and Rec. 2020 Color Space. If you set it to Project, then you have another set of settings that become available. You can then set the baseline settings for how Resolve decodes the raw footage into RGB uh, using these settings. And you can set these to anything you want. Uh, Nikon N-Log, Linear, Rec. 709, um, uh, Gamma 2.4, 2.6. You can use color spaces, Rec. 709, P3, if you're, if you're working in cinema, Rec. 2020. It's important to know that if you set this to project and you set these settings, whatever you set these settings to are going to be applied to all of the projects. So you can shoot Nikon NRAW SDR, set Resolve to interpret it as Rec. 2020 and N-Log, and it will do it that way rather than in Rec. 709. This is a global for the project. You can also set uh, sharpness, highlights, all of these uh, various settings any way you'd like them. Um, uh, I generally leave them alone. Um, I don't adjust any of these. And all of these settings, everything below the color space and gamma, are addressable at the clip level in the color panel in Resolve. All right, so once you've done this, we want to go to color management. So when you come to it, it'll look like this. The default color science is DaVinci YRGB which is an unmanaged color space. It'll be Rec. 709 by default, and it'll be the output color space will be whatever the timeline is. To use managed color space, first you drop, you take this drop down, choose DaVinci YRGB color managed, and you can just leave it at that. DaVinci will automatically transform the files you input to match the timeline color space, and it will then transform them to whatever your output color space is. So this is the other thing that is important to set regardless, and that is what the other output color space is for your project. So if you're 
working for uh, US TV, you want to be Rec 709. If you're working in 4K, you should be in Rec 2020. I generally work for either the web or or uh, US TV, so I generally am working to Rec 709 color space. You have a choice of color processing mode, and that's SDR or HDR. One of the advantages of working in DaVinci Managed Color is that you can work in HDR and deliver SDR. Resolve will take care of the, the transform. Or you can work in SDR and deliver in HDR. Same thing. If you want more control, unclick automatic color management, and then you get a bunch of different choices. Um, so for color mo processing mode, you have all of these drop-downs, Rec. 709, Rec. 2020. If you know that you need one of these, then it's a good place to work. I choose to take this to custom, and then I get another bunch of, of uh, settings. I'm working here on a project with uh, Nikon N-Log footage primarily, so I'm making the input color space Nikon N-Log. I can change this again at the clip level. The timeline color space is the space in which you do the color correction. And this changes the way the controls feel as you uh, use them. My choice on this is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. It's a very large color space, not unlike Profoto in Lightroom, um, that gives me a lot of room to push things around. And then output color space. Again, this is Rec. 709 Gamma, uh, Gamma 2.4 because I generally work for uh, to US TV, um, and because this is close enough to sRGB that it works for the web uh, as well. But you have a whole raft of choices here that you can uh, choose from depending on what your work is. So with this setup, either like this or simply as automatic color management turned on, hit save, and here you are. This is the Resolve color panel. There's a lot to learn here. Resolve's manual is 3,600 pages long, so um, I'm not going to get into anything like that uh, level of detail. But um, some important stuff. There is a camera raw tab in the color panel. If you want to change the raw settings on a shot-by-shot -shot basis, um, come down to the camera raw panel. By default, it's set to use the project settings because I set that in the camera raw uh, panel um, that we showed you a minute ago. Um, you can set this to clip. And in clip, you have access to all of the settings except for the basic color space and gamma interpretation of the file from raw to RGB. Color temperature, temp, exposure, you can, all of these are adjustable by the clip. So if I wanna make this really, really warm, Yuck. Let's make it really, really blue just for, for grins and uh, uh, make it, pull it down to green so it's kind of hard and cold. Uh, so we're going to pull this down to minus 20 and just have this have a little bit of pseudo halation. I'm now going to go and do a basic adjustment here. So I've got some grading going on here. Maybe I'm going to, maybe I'm going to, uh, do a little curve as well. All right, if I go to the window, if I right click, grab a still, this still contains this grade. If you want to apply this same grade to everything on this timeline, you can do it. So I'm gonna click the next clip. I'm gonna right click or control click this still, choose apply grade, and that grade is applied there. I can do the same, if I choose all of these files, I can do the same thing. Apply grade, they all get that grade. So remember I said earlier that these two settings, Rec 2020 and Nikon N-Log are uh, not changeable here in the color panel. Well, they aren't with one exception. This is a shot I was, I was doing when I was exploring the SDR and N-Log um, raw settings and what clipping was like uh, in the two of them. 
you see under project, this is Rex 2020 Nikon N-Log. I happen to shoot this one in SDR. So the metadata is Rex 709. So if I switch this to camera metadata, Resolve takes the interpretation back to Rex 709 uh, for both color space and gamma. So in that sense, you can have different um, color space and gamma per clip if they were different in the metadata um, at the time you shot them. So if I go to this one, you see the camera data on this one was Rec 2020 Nikon and log. So I can per clip choose to use what was shot uh, in the camera metadata, uh, or I can go to the project setting for both of these clips and have them both be interpreted in the Rec 2020 and Nikon N-Log uh, color space. Okay, to keep this simple, I think that's as far as I'm gonna go. I hope this is helpful. Happy to answer any questions I can with whatever time I have available. Good luck and happy shooting.